Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Exotic Astrology again and today we are going to discuss as per our ascendant, the Lagna, the rising sign, what effects will be there when Rahu and Ketu are going to change their signs. So we all know that on 5th March, 6th March, that is the time when Rahu is going to transit into the sign of Gemini from the sign of Cancer and Ketu is going to transit into the sign of Sagittarius from the sign of Capricorn. And as we all know that Rahu and Ketu, they stay in a sign for almost 18 months, a bit more than that. Okay, so today we will discuss on it. So I have two special files here and I'm recording with Zoom so that I can share my screen and show it to you. Okay, so in the first file, I have details of each and every ascendant which houses they will be transiting and i have also taken into consideration the position of saturn the, the lordships of saturn okay because saturn will also be conjunct ketu for a very long time this entire year until january next year and in the other page i have the information of all the uh, prominent dates of this year okay it's there till summer of this year and the remaining i will be posting it later and Regarding this transit, it is just like another transit. So many people have this query that how do we know what transits will give us? Okay, so the answer is very simple. Transits will only give you what your dasha is promising. There is no doubt on it. There is no ambiguity there. It's crystal clear. So which means that whatever your Vimshotri dasha is telling, Vimshotri Dasha, then Chara Dasha, then Narayan Dasha, Uru Dashas, then so many Dasha systems are there. So whatever your Dasha systems are telling, ultimately that happens. Okay, because the Dashas are very, very, very specific to one's individual chart. No two person will run the same Dasha. By that, I mean that you may run the Dasha of Sun or Venus, maybe with many other people, but for you, Venus will be in a different sign, in a different house, Yes, it will be conjunct some other planet. It will be aspected by some planet. And that may not be the same with uh, every anybody else in this world. Okay, so the Dasha is unique to an individual because Dasha is calculated from the chart, which is unique to everyone because everybody is unique ultimately. So that is why we do not have to uh, hype transits unnecessarily and uh, generally when Saturn or Rahu Ketu they change their signs there is a lot of fear mongering which goes on in the name of uh, astrology by many astrologers or rather I would say so called astrologers who try to create fear that this will happen that will happen this is happening that is happening no cool down chill out nothing of that sort is going to happen okay you have survived so many transits so much. <laughs> so if uh, the Dasha is not telling that there are problems which is going to come in this year or the next year, then there will be no serious issue in your life. Okay. And if the Dasha is telling that there will be problems, then even if these transits are good, then we can't do much because that's what the Dasha is telling. So the point which I'm trying to say is we did not study the transits independent of the Dasha. Okay. So the, now the next question people ask is that should we study the these transits from the moon or from the ascendant? Well, the answer is very simple. Uh, if you want to see those things which manifests at a realm, physical realm, yes, because we live in this material world. So for us, it is important that things manifest also on the material realm. So for that, we need to check the transits from the ascendant from the lagna from the rising sign now we also need to check the transits from the moon why because moon represents the mind but what is the mind moon represents how the society affects you okay so when we say that the physical manifested things can come from the ascendant it means that so for example let's talk with some examples suppose there is a transit happening for your seventh house, for example, suppose Rahu is going to transit your seventh house. Just take an example. Suppose you are a Sagittarius Lagna, or of course, I will give that for every Lagna, but I'm just giving this as an example. So for Sagittarius Lagna, Rahu is going to transit the seventh house. Okay. So what does this mean? This means that externally you will meet members of the opposite sex. 
okay because seventh house is the house of the opposite sex and anybody who you meet and you desire to go into an intimate uh, relationship with which culminates into marriage finally yes so that's how you see from the ascendant and now suppose from the moon it is happening in your 10th house okay rahu is transiting in your 10th house for example suppose so in that case how you will analyze this it's very simple it it means that although from the ascendant it's happening in the 7th house so you are meeting people externally okay and depending on the dasha it will be decided if you get married or enter into a relationship so all the sagittarius lagna people they are not going to get married just by rahu's entrance in the 7th house or you are not going to get divorced or your marriage is not going to break nothing of that sort is going to happen okay so relax but now suppose from your moon sign rahu is transiting in the 10th house so then what will happen is although you are externally getting married physically you are staying with somebody you have signed a contract okay that we will stay together for the rest of our life a legal contract that's the 7th house but from the moon because it's in the 10th house so what will happen is your mind will gravitate more towards your career towards your name fame success that's what will happen so society will tell you that you should focus on your career because we get influenced by people who stay around us and by society i just don't mean that people who try to influence us negatively or you know people who try to denigrate us i don't mean that i mean people in general so your family or friends or anybody that can happen okay or you internally may feel that now i need to go uh, towards my career okay that that can happen and now you may be thinking oh this is very contradictory well fortunately or unfortunately life is very complex many times people get married but then they actually want to do something in career and many times the opposite happens you want to get married but uh, uh, you know so many big things are happening in your career and then uh, people are telling you that uh, now you should get married and then you are confused what should i do should i do this or should i do that so life is very complex sometimes okay but irrespective of your lagna or your uh, moon sign this will only speak in the tone of the dasha okay so which means if the dasha for example if sagittarius lagna people only if your dasha is indicating then only there will be marriage okay otherwise there will be no marriage so now the other question people ask is that suppose i have some planets in these signs so now for example rahu will uh, go into uh, gemini and ketu will go into sagittarius so suppose some people they have uh, prominent planets like sun moon or ascendant or lord of the ascendant okay or the lord of the dasha so suppose you are running uh, sun mahadasha and your sun is placed either in sagittarius or in gemini or you are running venus mahadasha then if venus is in sagittarius or in gemini in your original natal birth chart okay so then how this will impact so then how we see this is that the then these transiting planets will try to influence these natal planets okay and they will try to influence the natural significations of that planet so which means suppose uh you have venus placed in gemini and rahu is transiting over it now so it can happen that suddenly you meet many people from the opposite sex who are of a different uh caste creed community religion or boundary you can meet foreigners indian can indians can maybe meet meet americans or germans or britishers okay or people from japan can end up meeting somebody from india these things can happen okay and similarly if ketu is transiting over your uh, natal venus or natal sun or natal moon so regarding those significations you can feel that now there is a time which i need to let go and i need to understand that sometimes i might have to stay without these things okay but ultimately whatever the dasha is telling that will happen so now we will start with what actually is happening and after this we will go to specific signs all right and yes if you are new to the channel and if you like this video then click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know about uh, what is going to happen during these transits okay as per their ascendant or moon sign and if you want a consultation from me regarding this transit then you can go down to my website and there are new options which i have opened in my website for consultations regarding a uh, vehicle or property purchase or child birth or kundli milan these are the op new options which i have uh, put in my website so 
uh, if you are interested or if you want to have a property or if you're planning for childbirth and you want to have my opinion on that then you can go to my website you will find the link down in the description section okay and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him even when rahu ketu changes signs all right so what rahu is going to do now rahu is going to enter into gemini and ketu is going to enter into sagittarius by the way these two are considered to be the exaltation signs of her both rahu and ketu exaltation means uccha exaltation does not mean good debilitation does not mean bad it means that a planet is in a very high dignity dignity means suppose when we say that he is a dignified principal of a college so it means that person exactly is aware of his duties yes of how he or she should behave as a principal that person does what he is supposed to do that person knows and acts in a way that uh, people want to respect him as the principal so that's the meaning of the word dignity now he uh, ideally if somebody is dignified then it is expected that he will do good but he may not do good at the end ultimately he may not be able to do good okay maybe there are some hostile forces within uh, his uh, within his school or within his management that the principal cannot function even if he wants to in a, in a dignified manner okay so that's what the situation is that many times we have exalted planets but we complain that uh, we suffer during their dashas this is because um, other planets could hinder their functioning okay and exaltation means awareness so the awareness is very high so what gemini is gemini is uh, the original third house of the zodiac as we all know and sagittarius is the original ninth house of the zodiac okay so rahu is the planet of materialistic desire and obsession rahu is the reason why we are born in this material world and rahu is the reason why we will again be born in this material world unless we look towards jupiter and as lord krishna says in the gita that yad gatva anani vartante tad dhama parama mama once you reach to my abode then you will not return back to this material world and krishna also says in the gita antakale cha mame va smaran muktva kale varam that one who dies or leaves his body by thinking of me at the time of his death he attains my abode without fail yes and to think of god when we are leaving this body is very difficult because they say at the time of death we remember 100 lifetimes yes there is a flashback of 100 lifetimes so that time wherever our strongest attachments are those things will come out okay so that is why the time of death is considered to be very difficult and now rahu is entering gemini gemini is basically what is the third house of the zodiac so third house is the house where the desires originate yes so third house is also the house of media creativity arts you know journalism and it's the eighth from the eighth house so third house is also the house of prostitution yes gemini is the sign of prostitution as we all know about it because it's the eighth from eighth it's the higher octave of scorpio and gemini is also the uh, house or third house is also the house of seduction because the third house is the uh, ninth from the seventh house so ninth house as we all know is the foundation of any house so when you are seduced by somebody what happens you get a desire to enjoy with them so when you get a desire to unite with somebody so that means you are getting a desire that now my seventh house should be activated so that means the third house is giving you seduction so because of that seduction you are wanting to go and enjoy with somebody else yes that is why the third house is the ninth from the seventh house that's the foundation as ninth house as we all know is the house of our father father is who gives birth to us okay so the third house gives birth to the ninth or to the seventh house that way yes and um, it's the house of desire it's the house of desire which we can fulfill ourselves and seventh house represents those desires libra which we want to fulfill with somebody else and 11th house aquarius represents those desires which we 
want to fulfill at a collective level with the society and with our friends, with our network circles, with our associates. So now when Rahu enters Gemini, and uh, on the other hand, Ketu's exaltation is also Sagittarius because Ketu is the uh, headless Moksha Karaka planet, which wants you to take wants to take you towards God. Okay, and the interesting thing is both of them are malefics because when we go towards God, we realize our shortcomings in our spiritual path. Okay, so people say that there are difficulties in life, but the more you become spiritual, the more you realize your own weaknesses. Okay, and that gives you an opportunity to work. So when Ketu is in Sagittarius, there you realize your highest vulnerability. You realize all your weaknesses. So that is the time when you can act completely on your weaknesses if you want to provide it, depending on your whole chart. And Rahu's exaltation is in Gemini because that is the reason he's born. Third house is the house of sexuality, as we all know, apart from the seventh and eleventh houses. So that's the desire which uh, keeps running and ruining this material world again and again. And the chitta, the atma, the pure consciousness. Okay, so that's the reason everybody is reborn. Okay, so that's the sign where he gets exalted because that is what he wants ultimately to enjoy. So now, when Rahu enters Gemini and Ketu enters Sagittarius, then we can have this task that we we are uh, we see our innermost desires, and at the same time, when those desires get fulfilled, or suppose you say that they do not get fulfilled, then we look to God, and because we have gone so far away from God, then when we look to God, He looks very distant, because Ketu is in Sagittarius, and then we realize that how far God is or how far we are from God. <laughs> because Krishna says in the Gita that I am situated in the heart of every living entity. So actually he is not far away from us. But we have taken our consciousness away from him. And we have started indulging in all this materialistic pleasure. So because of that we are suffering. So now this Transit can be a very good transit to have a realistic or to have a reality check on our desires. Because now is the time when our desires will increase. And the desires can be materialistic or spiritual also. Now there is nothing wrong in fulfilling the material desires unless it is under the codes of dharma, within the codes of religion. Okay, So suppose somebody uh, wants to enjoy sexual pleasure. So for them, uh, the provision is there in every religion, either you are a Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim or a Zoroastrian or any, any, any religion that you can marry. And once you marry, then you can enjoy with your spouse. Okay, so that, that uh, allowance is there. It is not that everybody has to go to the forest. And then, uh, so that, that, that's how you see, you know, that's one example that uh, you can fulfill your materialistic desires. But when we go beyond what dharma permits us you know because this saying is there dharma rakshati rakshita one who protects dharma, dharma protects one who protects dharma one who adheres adheres to dharma that's the statement dharma rakshati rakshita so when we uh, we forget god and we overly obsess ourselves with materialistic desires then rahu and ketu will torment us yes because then we forget what is the ultimate goal of life, that is to obtain spiritual perfection. So for that, it is highly essential that we do spiritual practices diligently during this time. And uh, Jupiter is the lord of Sagittarius and Ketu is also the plant of spirituality and Jupiter also represents uh, the cultural aspect of spirituality. So that is why Ketu in Sagittarius is a very harmonious energy. And on the other hand, Rahu in Gemini, that can pull us towards materialistic desires. So that's what I said earlier, that the more we go away from God, the more when we look to God, we will realize how far we are from Him. And that will motivate us more to go towards spirituality. Okay. So now you find a guru or you meet some spiritual people, you go to a spiritual organization or not, that and all will be decided uh, based on your dasha. Okay. So that's the uh, summary of this transit. And... 
now this transit is not an ordinary transit because saturn is also going to be conjunct ketu so i have already made videos on that uh, with sanati ji so if you have not watched the saturn ketu videos then please go and watch it okay we will find it in this channel so now what i will do is i will share my screen and i will uh, give the important dates and then i will speak on every ascendant and how the flow is happening okay so should i share my screen now there you go i am sharing the screen and this is the file important dates all right so this is the main file okay is this better or is this better huh. both are good <laughs> but this is better because uh, krishna says in the gita that by the vedas i am to be known so i wanted that his photo should be there okay so important dates so rahu and ketu are uh, changing the signs from 6th of march to 23rd september of 2020 okay so till this 18 months they will be there hovering around in this signs of gemini and sagittarius respectively then saturn and ketu will be conjunct from 6th march until 23rd january 2020 next year till the time saturn goes to capricorn then mars and rahu will be conjunct from 7th of may to 22nd of june this year that period could be a bit challenging because uh, mars and saturn will also be in mutual aspect remember that because saturn and ketu are conjunct so this axis could turn up a bit challenging during that time okay during this uh, may june then jupiter and ketu will be conjunct from november 5th 2019 to 23rd september un until K ketu leaves to scorpio because jupiter is entering sagittarius uh, for some time in the month of march and april it is again getting back to the sign of uh, scorpio again in jeshta nakshatra okay but finally on 5th november around it will completely move into sagittarius so there it will be conjunct ketu till the time ketu leaves sagittarius then jupiter will be retrograde from 10th april, april to 11th august so it will go from sagittarius because it will enter sagittarius in zero degrees and then again it goes back to scorpio and 11th august it will again go direct from scorpio jeshta nakshatra then saturn will be retrograde in purva shada nakshatra on 30th april it will station and then it will be uh, quite closely conjunct ketu that time okay because ketu will uh, and as we all know rahu ketu goes retrograde so they travel in a backward motion so from 30 degrees uh, ketu will reach quite a bit close to saturn on april 30th so it's like almost 2 months and then saturn will be retrograde till 18 september and it will still be in purva shada nakshatra only and then saturn will go direct again and on finally when saturn next year january will enter capricorn okay so after that saturn ketu will separate then solar eclipse is in ardhra nakshatra july 2nd 2019 so sun moon will be conjunct with rahu and venus is also there i'm i'm not sure about venus but yes the solar eclipse is there okay in 16 degrees of um, gemini this is there so these are the important dates okay so now what i will do is i will take out this report okay so are you able to see this hopefully okay all right so now we will discuss on what these effects will be on each and every ascendant so what i have done is for uh, each and every ascendant i have made this ascendant list then i have made uh, the position of rahu here then ketu's position which means this is not your birth position your natal position this is the position where these transits are happening rahu ketu's transit okay and wherever ketu's position is there saturn's position is also there because saturn and ketu will be conjunct till january next year but this is the lordship of saturn 
Lordship means which houses Saturn is ruling as per the ascendant. Okay, the number 10 is Capricorn and number 11 is Aquarius, as we all know. So for Aries, these Capricorn and Aquarius falls in the 10th house and the 11th house. That is why this is the same. And for uh, Libra, it falls in the 4th and the 5th. So it's 4 and 5. And this is how this has been distributed. Okay. So now, now let's start with the uh, first group of ascendants. Now, yeah, why did I mention Saturn's Lordship? Because whichever house Saturn is ruling in your chart, it can happen that you are a bit confused related to those houses and you want to let go of those houses. It, it can happen during this year. So we need to do our meditation properly and not get too much obsessed. We may feel that we are not able to see results related to the houses which Saturn is ruling in the chart. Okay. So that will play around through the houses where uh, K2 and Saturn are going to be placed. Okay. So I will explain this not to worry. So Rahu, Rahu in case of Aries Ascendant. So let's start with Aries Ascendants. Rahu will be in the third house and Saturn K2 will be placed in their ninth house. And Saturn rules the 10th and the 11th houses. So now Rahu will be in the third house. So that means your relationship with your uh, younger sibling, your first younger sibling or general siblings in general, I would say younger siblings or maybe even elder siblings because from there it aspects the 11th house. So it could happen that uh, there are some new things which are coming up or it can happen that there is area of improvement which you realize with your sibling. Then you will become very much desirous of doing something new which you have never done because third house is also the house of entrepreneurship and doing things with courage. So you will become very courageous during this time, Aries Ascendance, and you will want to do things which you have never done. And it can happen that people tell you that you are going a bit too much on this track, but you will still say that, no, no, I will go more in this track. Okay. So new, new things will happen in your life, which you will yourself do without anybody telling you. And then Ketu is uh, with Saturn in your ninth house. So now this can manifest in many ways. This is a great time for your spirituality because tenth, uh, the ninth Lord Saturn, uh, the 11th Lord Saturn, which is the house of 11th Lord is showing your network circles. So that is going to uh, transit in the ninth house. So you can go into spiritual places, spiritual centers. And because it is the 10th Lord and the 11th Lord and it is with Ketu in the ninth house. So it can happen that there are some uh, issues related to your career with uh, where, whenever it comes to the boss or maybe some issue with your father. Okay, so your, your father may tell you that or you should not be doing this. You should be doing something else because the placement will tell you who is telling that and the lords, lordships will tell you what they are talking about. Okay, so this is what is important to know. But this is a great time for spirituality and going into seclusion. Why I say seclusion? Because Ketu is there in the ninth house. Okay, so ninth house, whenever Ketu transits, so we need to uh, go deep into our spiritual practices. So for Aries Lagna people, this is one of the most phenomenal times when Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu, they are uh, linking to the ninth house. Okay, so Jupiter will also be conjunct Ketu as we discussed earlier. So that's a very good time. So you must utilize this time for your spirituality and also for doing new things in this material world. Okay, so this balance has to be there. The three nine axis is very important. And it can happen that there are some issues related to documents or uh, whenever you sign documents, you should be very careful. So please read the conditions apply properly. Okay, Aries Ascendants. Then let us go to the Taurus Ascendants. So for Taurus Ascendants, Rahu is going to be sitting in your second house and Ketu in your eighth house with Saturn and Saturn lords the ninth and the tenth houses. So Saturn is a Great Yoga Karaka for you. Yoga Karaka means one who lords a Kendra and a Trikon. Ninth house is a Trikon and 10th house is the Kendra. So these two are the strongest houses of the horoscope. So the Yoga Karaka is going into the 8th house with Ketu. So now for you, this can be a time for your inner journey. Inner journey means there are so many things about your own spirituality which you will discover. There are, there are, there are things which you could have thought that 
maybe this spiritual practice works for me this way but now you may realize that it is not working and you may get too much obsessed about it yes things related to career may also have those dynamics but now is the time that you will discover you will actually start uh, getting these vibes that maybe i need to change my career or maybe not i i may not need to change it depending on my dasha but maybe i need to act in a different way yes because the eighth house deals with secret things secret means those things which you thought you know but later on you realize that you don't know them okay so that's how the eighth house could have their flavor flavor with the ninth and the tenth lords saturn and rahu is transiting in your second house <clears throat> so if your dasha is permitting uh, financial growth career growth then this is a tremendous opportunity for uh, financial growth for career growth because second house is also the house of money and if your dasha is permitting marriage then it could happen that you get married because jupiter will be uh, in your 7th house in scorpio for a very long time till end of november almost so if your dasha is permitting marriage then you might get married because second house is also family okay so will the second house placement of rahu act uh, in a way for career or family that will be decided by your dasha so that we cannot say from this placement alone we need to check the dasha for that and it could happen that uh, there are some uh, family issues which come up that could happen irrespective of uh, either it's a time for career or marriage because whenever a malefic transits the second house then some issues could come up related to the family so your family may say that uh um, that somebody from your family may say that they they don't want to stay with you or you may feel that i don't want to stay with somebody else or you may f- you may uh find somebody else as a part of your family these things could happen so that's that's how you have to study depending on the dasha then for gemini for gemini rahu is transiting in your lagna first house and ketu is transiting in your 7th house and saturn lords the 8th house and the 9th house so the 8th lord and the 9th lords lord saturn is coming to your 7th house so now is the time along with ketu of course so now is the time that you do spiritual practices with your spouse together now is the time that you try to go deeper why do i say deeper because it's the 8th lord 8th lord shows anything which you want to go deep into so now is the time that you decide finally that i will go into depth of things depth of things like occult spirituality all these things because 8 and 9 houses they deal with core spirituality 9th house is enlightenment and 8th house is where you start seeking enlightenment because 8th house is the house of tears as we know so now if anything wrong had happened with you if you had an emotional trauma now is the time that you try to forgive those people okay now is the time that you try to pull out yourself from all those traumas because saturn is also the ninth lord so now is the time that you meet some guru now is the time that you join some spirituality and you don't do this alone you you could do this with a spiritual community because this is happening in your 7th house and this will give you tremendous upliftment in your spiritual life on the other hand rahu is transiting in your lagna so when rahu transits in your lagna you will feel that everything is a too much of something which means that everything will affect you very strongly anything which is happening around you 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 will start feeling it very strong you will feel that i am not able to achieve what i wanted to achieve and because of that you will work 10 times harder you will earn, you will work 20 times harder you will work million times hard, harder so this is a time to know who you are this is a time to know yourself this is what i will say yourself doesn't mean that you don't know yourself but this is a time when you can know who your inner most desires are who you are actually as a person or who you thought you are but you are actually not so now is the time that you will come into contact with that person who you are running away from all the time 
okay these years so that's a very important transit because it's happening in your one seven axis okay so for you it's highly recommended that you uh, take shelter of some guru or spiritual organization and you can also do this mantra om gurave nama every day morning 108 times okay i'm reciting it again om gurave nama om gurave nama om gurave nama this mantra will be very good for you especially only for this ascendant it is required okay so you could also read the scriptures you could also read the holy books from which your tradition you are okay that that's how uh, you will be affected by this in a positive way and also uh, you could meet many foreign people or you could have some uh, discussions or some heated arguments about spirituality with with other people okay because this conjunction is happening in your seventh house this these things could happen so that's what is for gemini and these gemini will be affected the most uh, because rahu is transiting in the lagna itself okay so now let's talk of cancer for cancer rahu is transiting in the 12th house and ketu and saturn are in the 6th house and saturn is lording the 7th and the 8th houses okay so now for cancer Rahu is in the twelfth house and Ketu is in the sixth. So this is a good time if you suppose if you are at the age of twenty five or twenty seven or twenty eight or twenty four also maybe if you want to go to any foreign country for your higher studies or for doing masters PhD or anything of that sort, then this is a great time that you could go. At the same time, uh, some issues related to your marriage could come up. because the seventh lord is transiting in your sixth house so uh, there could be some uh, reason because of which uh, your work stress could increase because of which uh, you might uh, have to stay more in the office rather than staying in your home so uh, there could be less of uh, intimate time which you spend with your family or with your spouse these things could happen so work stress workload could come and by this you could be feeling a bit headless about your marriage and your uh, eighth house stuff okay so eighth house and seventh house when they are linked that can show our uh, desire for intimacy or staying together with somebody so for that uh, we need to ensure that we do not take too much of the work pressure to our heart we we try to make time for our spam family for our spouse so this is what we should try to do and we should not get too much obsessed with the competitive scenario which could come up because uh, this is in your 6th house okay ketu and saturn so so don't be unnecessarily competitive do not get into unnecessary quarrels lawsuits troubles fights okay do not get into all this unnecessarily and because of all this it could happen that you want to move to some foreign land you feel that i have stayed enough at this place i want to have a change of my residence these cool things could happen okay so for cancer it's work work and work which could come up and you could also have a desire to kind of escape to somebody else okay to some other place these things could happen then for leo ascendants this transit of rahu is in your 11th house so therefore whenever rahu is transiting 11th house you will see that for the next 18 months you will meet so many people which you have who, who you never met before and frankly speaking it could happen that after rahu leaves you know the 11th house and rahu moves into your 10th house later you know after september of 2020 it could happen that suddenly all those people disappear and you never meet them again you may meet them some other time but it could happen that suddenly they disappear so rahu in the 11th house is great for a uh, name fame success it is one of the best placements in fact so thumbs up for all the leo ascendants so this is the time that you will focus on your network circle you will try to uh, network with everybody you will try to see that how i can profit from my friends from my acquaintances so in your phone the contact list will become very big now you can watch watch out if that happens or not okay and on the other hand ketu and saturn will be in your 5th house 
and Saturn is lording the sixth house and the seventh house. So now what this means? This means that you could feel a bit confused regarding, suppose you are searching somebody to get married. So it could happen that you are confused about who I should marry because the seventh Lord is going with Ketu. So sixth Lord will show your daily routine, your daily stuff. So these things could happen that you are confused about what I should be doing, who I should be marrying. There could be many proposals which you get, but you may not be able to decide that who I should be marrying. Okay, so that, that could be one issue which could happen. And because it is in the fifth house, so if you are having children, so it could happen that uh, your children are not listening to you sometimes. It could happen that you are unable to focus on your creativity. You are unable to focus on things which you love to do because fifth house shows the reason why you get up in the morning. So you may have to sacrifice some of your passions for uh, spiritual growth these things could happen okay but at the same time fifth house is the house of mantra so it is a great time for uh, things related to uh, mantra to take diksha to take initiation from some guru if you are already planning to okay so for leo ascendance that's a thumbs up in the fifth house also so two thumbs up for leo ascendance all right then let's go to virgo ascendance virgo people this Rahu is transiting in your 10th house. So your entire focus will shift towards how can I do things in a way that people recognize me? Okay. Name, fame, post, position, power, authority, success, doing something big. If you are planning to ditch your job and become an entrepreneur, this is the time. If you are planning for a promotion, this is the time. If you are planning for doing something very big in life, it's like which people tell that, okay, you should have not done it, you know, but you dared. <laughs> so Virgo people, this is the time that you got to do because Rahu's transit in 10th house will happen only once in 18 years. So do not miss this time. Okay. The full focus on your outwardly achievements. That's what your focus will be. And it should be also. Then the Saturn Ketu conjunction is happening in your fourth house. And Saturn lords the fifth and the sixth houses. So for you, it could happen that there are some issues in your home. Yes, fourth house is the home. Because of which you might feel that better I stay outside in my office. I don't want to come home much. Maybe your uh, spouse fights with your you know, mother or father or these things could happen. You know, those typical things in the Indian scenario and many other countries also. If you are a man, especially, you know, your wife and your mother-in-law could have some tusks or um, there could be some tusks between your husband or your wife and your uh, son or your daughter because the fifth Lord is involved in it and the sixth Lord is also involved. So because of uh, home or sorry, because of work stress, because of some work, you might uh, feel that now. I'm not able to come to my home. I'm not able to spend much time. So you can feel a bit headless on those lines. Okay. So if you are not having children and if you are planning to have children, then there could be some challenges or setbacks which come in those areas because the fifth Lord is involved here. So you could feel that. Why am I not able to have children? So you, you could want to do some uh, checkup for you and your spouse. The, the, these things could happen. Okay. And then results may not be as you expect. Or there may be confusion. The doctors may not be able to say that why you are not you know, able to have children. So these things could happen. Okay. So if, if it happens, don't uh, worry too much. Then for Libra, for Libra ascendance, uh, this transit is happening for you. Rahu is in your ninth house and Ketu will enter your third house along with Saturn. And Saturn is also the yoga karaka because it rules the fourth and the fifth house houses for Libra Lagna. So Rahu in the ninth house. <clears throat> so now it is essential that you devote time towards learning new things in life. So if you are planning to do a master's or a PhD, this is the best time for you. So when Rahu transits the ninth house, uh, your interest towards spiritual things could awaken. And uh, it could happen that uh, you you could want to do something in spirituality 
some spiritual practice which you have never done before and which you did not think that you would ever end up doing but then you think now that maybe i could try this also okay so that 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 could happen in your case and if it happens it's great so now is the time that you will focus on learning anything basically material or spiritual now is the time that you will want to have a consultation from a good astrologer or from a good life coach now is the time that you will want to find a good mentor in life because it could happen that uh, you are getting filled with information overload with rahu in the ninth house okay the gemini energy too much information on spirituality too much information on god on youtube but you don't know the conclusion these things could happen but use this on a positive note you can experiment you can research you can meet different gurus you can talk to them you can ask questions and then you can decide who you want your guru as and then rahu uh, then ketu will transit in your third house along with the lords of the fourth and the fifth so some issues related to the homeland could come up here some issues related to documentation some issues related to uh, where you should stay and some issues related to education could come up so it could happen because this is a bit harmonious with the ninth house that you might have to move to a foreign land for you know studying for your bachelor's or master's or phd these things could happen and at the same time uh, if you are having children then there could be some distance between you and your child this could this could also happen because saturn is also the fifth lord okay and uh, you may not want to be so much courageous this time you may feel that i have shown enough of my courage now i need to settle down this is what ketu in the third house could tell you and you will want to study more and you know learn more about things you will observe things more you will you will not take things lightly you will not take things cheaply you will try to find the reason behind everything else which happens now you will get interest towards law of karma and such things so for libra it's a great time to utilize in your spiritual journey okay so thumbs up for libras then for scorpio for scorpio this transit of rahu is happening in your 8th house and ketu and saturn will be in your second and it's lord saturn lords the third and the fourth houses okay so now saturn ketu in the second house there could be some uh, difficult issues which come up in your family and because the fourth lord is associated so your home or property could be the issue so there could be some property disputes with your family or some disturbances with your siblings could happen and because of this uh, you could want to go towards occult you know where rahu is going to transit so you could feel that enough of it now i need to go into occult sciences because i am not getting much happiness from all this family or you know things like um car or home or land all this stuff and 3 and 4 also deals with education so if you are uh, already thinking to go to a different place for your education then this is the time maybe you could decide that i need to study and go to a different place because uh, saturn and ketu will separate you from the second house so you could be separated from your family for some matters related to education or many times it happens that people go uh, and stay in hostels or you know small centers just for studying for entrance exams these things could happen with scorpio ascendants but great interest will come towards occult if your dasha is permitting that you will do research then uh, this is a great time to do research indeed okay so for scorpio it's a time to become spiritual this is a very important time for you so don't lose this time then sagittarius so sagittarius rahu is transiting your 7th house and ketu saturn will transit your lagna itself and saturn rules the second and the third house the houses so now rahu is transiting seventh house so you will get many opportunities depending on your dasha either to date or to get married and it could happen that uh, there are some unusual occurrences within your relationship you could meet somebody who is from a foreign land or who is from a different religion different caste creed community or you suddenly develop interest towards such people these things could also happen 
and it could also happen that you travel to different places with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or husband or wife where you have never traveled you do things which you have never done before or uh, it could also happen that uh, you want to go for uh, things like inter caste marriage or you know you don't want to marry within the same caste creed religion like uh, like as they say in india inter caste marriage you know like uh, your and your spouse they are from a like maybe in india a tamilian gets married to a punjabi these things could happen depending on what what your dasha is telling and you will meet lots of members of the opposite sex but they will be of a tricky nature they will be of a different nature and uh, it could also happen that if you are not careful then uh, later on you realize that whatever your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend said uh, is not what actually happened or what hap happened that they actually did not say so be vigilant on your spouse okay this is what i will say and for you uh, saturn ketu they are going to be conjunct in your lagna itself so this is a time when you can feel that you are not able to get a hold of what life is second lord and third lord so something to do with money finances family so there could be some uh, issues with the family or people who you consider to be your family these things could happen and the third house also shows things related to documents so you really need to be very careful regarding documents okay and before you sign anything else then uh, you must read the things properly and you could feel that i am needing to do too much hard work and you are not getting much results that happens when saturn transits the lagna but you can use this as a journey for your spirituality where you learn to do things without expecting results from it in return okay so in that sense this is a very good time for you so we always need to see the positive side of things okay rather than seeing negative things so that's what is for sagittarius uh, wish you all the best then for capricorn rahu is transiting your 6th house ketu transits with saturn in the 12th house and saturn lords your lagna and the second house so now for capricorn your entire focus will be in winning competitions if you don't have a job you will apply for jobs you will get obsessed towards working 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 you will get obsessed towards competition and you will also likely face competition okay if your dasha is permitting so it could happen that to win competitions or to win things it at your workplace uh, you have to do some things which uh, is bit unusual which you did not do earlier or which you did not think that you would end up doing but then you ultimately end up doing this could happen and it could happen that some unusual issues come up in your workplace or you need to learn unusual skills or maybe you travel abroad you know for some conference for your job these things could happen so in a way rahu's transit in the 6th house is considered to be excellent because it finishes off all the enemies and then saturn and ketu will transit in your 12th house so lagna lord is transiting in your 12th house and second lord is also saturn so saturn rules the lagna and the second so you and your belongings they are going to the foreign lands so this is a very good time if you are planning to make a shift of your country then you can do if you are outside and you plan to come back to your home country that you can do or if you are in your country you plan to go to some other country that you can do but because the lagna lord is going conjunct with ketu so there could be some level of uh, headlessness which you feel some level of confusion about all areas of your life this happens when the lagna lord gets conjunct to ketu okay but uh, because this is happening in your 12th house so this is a great time to go to ashrams to go to monasteries to go to places which you have uh, you had never gone this is a time to explore things which you thought are not important but later on you re you will realize that uh, it's very important and it's great that i went there 
So Ketu transiting in the 12th house, you could have a desire that, oh my God, I'm working so much. I need some freedom now. Okay, so second Lord Saturn is with Ketu. So uh, your family may say that go here, come here. Yes, so your family may, uh, may sometimes oppose your stay in some place or they might say that you should come back here, but you might say that, no, no, I want to stay here. These things could happen by second Lord's conjunction with Ketu. Okay. And you may be a bit confused regarding your finances, where to invest. So you should uh, take a good, uh, you should take good advice before you invest your money into stuff. Okay. So that's my recommendation to Capricorn. Then finally, Aquarius. So Aquarius, your Rahu is transiting in your fifth house and Ketu and Saturn will be in your 11th and Saturn lords the Lagna and the 12th house. So now Rahu in fifth, you will obsessively go behind dating people. These, these things could happen and depending on your Dasha, if your Dasha is permitting uh, dating affairs or having physical relation or relationships or marriage, either of that, then uh, these things could happen. And if you are planning to have children, then this is a good time. And it's a great time for your creativity. It's a great time for exploring yourself. It's a great time to do things which you love. It's a great time to do things which you always wanted to do. Like maybe playing a guitar or playing the piano or maybe, you know, opening a YouTube channel. These things, if you wanted to do, but you never got a chance to do, you should do it because fifth house shows who your atma is okay at the soul level and saturn and ketu are in the 11th house of network circles so because of that what could happen is that you want to stay a bit aloof from other people you want to stay a bit secluded or you want some more of an intimate connection with somebody you you will not want to make too many friends this time you will uh, feel that what is the use of having uh, 500 friends in Facebook if I am not able to share my heart with somebody else? So now is the time that you will want to uh, be more in your closed circles. So with your wife, with your husband, or with your girlfriend, boyfriend, mother, father. So you will want to withdraw a bit and not go too much on the outer world. Okay, and because the 12th Lord is with Ketu, so this is a great time for uh, spiritual encounters, meeting spiritual personalities. And 11th house is the house of association. So when Ketu transits the 11th house, it said that you meet spiritual people. So it's a great time for spiritual uh, progress. If your Dasha is permitting that, then it will happen. But even if the Dasha is not permitting, you can try from your side. All right, so that is my suggestion to Aquarius. And now for Pisces, Pisces Lagna people. Rahu is transiting your fourth house. And Ketu and Saturn will transit your 10th house. And Saturn rules the 11th house and the 12th house. So now for Pisces, because this conjunction of Saturn Ketu is in the 10th, so you will feel that your reputation is taking a too much of a toll on your head. All right. And you, you will feel that uh, maybe I don't need to be too much obsessed about my work. Why I say work? Not because of the 10th house. Because Saturn also lords the 11th house of income. Okay, 6th house is job, 10th house is your status, and 11th house is your income, and 2nd house is your savings. So when the 11th lord is transiting the 10th house, it's a great time for career. <clears throat> Indeed, but now Saturn is with Ketu. So what will happen is, you will think that I have a lot of plans for my career. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this also and that also simultaneously. But uh, <clears throat> you may feel that there are restrictions. There are conditions which are put because of which I cannot work. Right. So for you, it's highly recommended that you do not get too much obsessed about your uh, about your limitations in your workplace. Okay. So um, if you are thinking that. Now uh, I will. Uh, I need to do something really big, or if I don't do, what will people think of me? All these unnecessary things you might think. 
but i would say that you need to relax <clears throat> And you need to go more inwards because Rahu is transiting in your fifth, fourth house. And so fourth house is the place where you <clears throat> find your uh, ultimate happiness. So fourth house is the house of contentment. So now uh, it does not mean <clears throat> that you do not work and you just keep sitting. Now is the time <clears throat> because Jupiter is in Scorpio in your ninth house. Your Lagna Lord is in the ninth house. Okay. So now is the time when you do spiritual practices, you learn new things about life. Fourth house is also the house of learning as we all know. And you know how to relax. Alright, so this is not a time where you get too much obsessed with doing big things in life. Because if you uh, get too much obsessed, <clears throat> then it, it could happen that you are facing uh, some kind of a limitation which, <clears throat> which is giving you so much frustration later on. So, <clears throat> now is the time when you relax. You spend more time with your family. Fourth house is your home. Okay, you renovate your home. You decide if you want to change your residence. If you want to move to a place where uh, you find that uh, there are people who you are more close to. Yes, heart to heart connection is there. So then you could move to such a place rather than staying alone somewhere. These, these things could be there. All right. So my recommendation for Pisces Lagna people is that you stay at a place where you have people, where you know people, okay, and stay in a setting where there is a family like scenario rather than staying alone. And if you are planning to do something related to education, learning a new skill could be something which is required, which is the need of need of the hour, as they say. Okay. And because your Lagnesh is in the ninth house. Till November, it's a great time for meeting your guru and for you know taking enlightenment from your gurus. So learn new things, stay in your home, be with family, be with friends, and do spiritual practices. Okay. So that is what I will say, and I will stop the screen share now. Wow, it's been a long time. Okay, so thank you very much. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can go to my website below. Okay, until next time. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Bye-bye.